Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. COVID-19 cases are surging ahead of the holidays and the Omicron variant is spreading to more states. How officials are responding coming up. Outside with live cam, it's an extra blanket kind of morning. Perhaps the furnace is even on as we start out our Tuesday. Good morning, everybody. It is December 7th. Thanks for joining us. I feel ahead of the game because yesterday when that cold front came in, I was already prepared. That's awesome. Yeah, our furnace may be on today and it's going to be right back to air conditioning in a matter of days. Here's Mike Oster Hage with more. Yeah, yeah thank I, you. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> thank you. Thank oh, you. You're, you're very welcome. So anyway, I wish I could take credit for it. Um, yeah, it's basically going to be about three seasons in one week. So we've got fall. It's going to be summer and then fall slash winter by uh, the end of the weekend. So as far as temperatures are concerned and yeah, grab a jacket this morning as expected. It is uh, definitely chilly out there. We do have a couple of clouds hanging around. Temperature right now stands at 50, 44 in Bull Verde, 49 in New Braunfels, low 40s in the hill country and very, very dry air. And that's important for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it is allowing temperatures to really dip down. Now we do have a little bit of a cloud cover acting like a blanket on top of us. We have very light wind out there. Uh, we're not getting down as cold cold as what we could get had if we had no cloud cover at all we'd be dropping down even further I think we will drop down a couple of more degrees but uh, like I said not as cold as what we could be getting this morning with that little bit of a breeze in some spots like New Braunfels there is a bit of a wind chill so yeah definitely uh, kind of turn up your collar a little bit this morning also what's interesting is there is rain being detected on radar. This is upstairs in the atmosphere. It is not reaching the ground because uh, with those very low dew point temperatures, you got a temperature of 50 dew points, 25. So that big difference in there, really dry air. This is all evaporating before it reaches the ground. If there's a sprinkle, don't be surprised. But again, most of this is just going to evaporate before it ever uh, hits the ground. Mold is on the high side from yesterday's count and throughout the rest of the morning. Again, I think we dropped down a few more degrees right around mid 40s when it's all said and done. Mostly cloudy skies and then high temperature today, 65. Both of those numbers just about exactly what you would expect for the 7th of December. How hot is it going to get? It's going to get pretty darn hot by the end of the week, but good looking weekend in store details in just a couple of minutes. Steph. Thank you, Mike. Bear County deputies responded to a crash in South Bear County after a man was hit by a vehicle. This happened near Von Army by Highway 16 in Brentwood around 9 last night. Deputies say a man was knocked right out of his shoes and taken to the hospital. We're told he is expected to survive. Deputies say the driver who hit him stayed at the scene to help. So far, no word on any charges. This morning, the COVID variant Omicron prompting new vaccine mandates in some states and revised recommendations by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. ABC's M. Wynn is in Washington with the latest. COVID-19 cases surging in the U.S., up 27% in the last week. The new Omicron variant popping up in a growing number of states. We've not only had uh, an incredible COVID surge, um, but also a COVID surge of those that are critically ill. At least 19 states have confirmed cases of the Omicron variant. The latest cases in Texas and Hawaii, where the patients reported no travel. Others, like in Minnesota and Mississippi, reported recent travel to New York, where Mayor Bill de Blasio just announced a vaccine mandate that's being called the first in the nation of its kind. Vaccination is the central weapon in this war against COVID. Effective December 27th, all private sector's employees will have to have one dose of the vaccine. Children 5 to 11 will also need proof of one dose to enter restaurants, gyms and entertainment venues. And anyone 12 and older will need to show two vaccine doses. I think it's protective of our family and also protective of other people. There's no need for any of this. Pediatric virus infections are also climbing. Last week, another 133,000 children tested positive. More than 7 million children have contracted COVID since the start of the pandemic. As winter nears, the CDC now urging people to use rapid tests before heading to an indoor gathering, regardless of vaccination status. Starting this weekend in France, nightclubs must close for four weeks in response to the rise in COVID cases. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. President Joe Biden is ready to warn Vladimir Putin during a video call later today that Russia will face economy jarring sanctions if it invades neighboring Ukraine. The president is seeking a diplomatic solution to deal with tens of thousands of Russian troops that are near the border with Ukraine. 
White House officials say Biden will make clear that the administration is preparing to put new sanctions in place against the Kremlin that would have huge consequences for the Russian economy. Putin, meanwhile, is expected to demand guarantees from Biden that the NATO alliance will never expand to include Ukraine. Biden has said he won't accept such, quote unquote, red lines. Under court order, the White House has reinstated a Trump-era immigration program which sends migrants to Mexico while they wait for an immigration hearing in the U.S. The policy is now back in effect in El Paso. That's after a judge ruled that the Biden administration could not terminate the program. The administration says they will appeal that ruling. In the meantime, the White House has promised that migrants enrolled in the program will have improved access to lawyers and quicker case turnaround. Today is a date that continues to live in infamy. The U.S. marking the 80th anniversary of the attack on our U.S. Navy base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The attack took place December 7th, 1941 and took 2,390 American lives. Today, about 30 survivors and 100 other veterans of the war expected to participate in a ceremony at a pier overlooking the USS Arizona Memorial. They'll observe a moment of silence at 7.55 a.m. local time, the same minute the attack began decades ago. Japanese forces attacked Pearl Harbor with torpedo planes, bombers, and fighters on the morning of December 7th in the hope of destroying the U.S. power in the Pacific. The attack led the United States to enter World War II and eventually defeat both Germany and Japan, Japan in August of 1945 following the U.S. atomic bomb attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And time now, 436 in about 48 degrees out there. Still ahead, you may have a little extra money waiting for you if you use TikTok. We'll tell you why. Also next, the San Antonio Spurs trying to extend their win streak to five games last night in Phoenix. We're going to have the highlights. Outside with live cam this morning, 48 degrees out of San Antonio International Airport. A few folks on the road this morning, up bright and early on a Tuesday morning. Glad you're with us as we get rolling right here on GMSA. Got a few lanes closed, 281 at Hildebrand. We'll keep you updated. Our San Antonio Spurs ending their West Coast road trip looking for their fifth straight win against another Western Conference powerhouse, Phoenix Suns. Once again, San Antonio off to a fast start last night. Derek White finds Keldon Johnson in the basket for two. Spurs lead 16-10. Suns trail for a majority of the first half, but use a late push to take a 51-41 lead at halftime. All five San Antonio starters scored in double figures, led by DeJounte Murray, 17 points. Ben Forbes added 15 off the bench, but in the end it was enough. Spurs had their four-game win streak snapped. Phoenix wins it, 108-104. Phoenix was playing its first game since having its franchise record 18-game win streak snapped against Golden State on Friday. Next up, Spurs begin a five-game homestand starting with the New York Knicks tonight. Tip-off set for 7.30 at the AT&T Center. The newly crowned Conference USA champion UTSA Roadrunners headed to the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl December 21st will face San Diego State. It's the same bowl they were offered last year with seven wins but was canceled due to COVID. The Aztecs are 11-2 after losing their Mountain West Conference Championship game to Utah State 46-13. Now the Roadrunners will be trying for another first, their first bowl win in team history. I'm excited for our players, obviously, because it's close to home and our crowd. Uh, we'll travel, and uh, we're excited about that. You know, with the momentum we have right now in the city and our fan base and students and just in the state of Texas, honestly, uh, we're just excited. We have a lot of players on our roster from that area, and it's just good to go back and, and, and be close to home. No matter what game we're playing with, if we were 0-3 and three and had one more game left, we wouldn't really care. We want to uh, make sure we put our type of football on the field and um, make sure we make Coach Trailer proud and uh, really show what we can do. The Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl set for Tuesday, December 21st, 6.30 p.m. at Toyota Stadium. And congratulations to UTSA coach Jeff Trailer, who was just named the AFCA Regional Coach of the Year. Very exciting. Congratulations. Time now, 441 and 48 degrees. Still ahead, if you use TikTok or Zoom, you might have some settlement money waiting to be claimed. The next, we're hearing directly from veteran Hollywood armor Thel Reed, whose daughter served as armor on the set of the Alec Baldwin film, Rust. Welcome back, it's 444. Veteran Hollywood armorer Thel Reed, whose daughter, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, was the armorer on the movie set of Rust, is speaking out in an ABC News exclusive interview. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive on the tragic death of Russ cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Do you believe sabotage was possible on the set? For the first time, we're hearing directly from veteran Hollywood armor Thel Reed, defending his daughter Hannah Gutierrez Reed, the armor on the set of Rust. As a father, are you concerned that Hannah could go to jail? This was only the second time his 24-year-old daughter was hired to be in charge of all weapons on a movie set, something George Stephanopoulos discussed with Alec Baldwin. Did you think she was up to the job? I assume because she was there and she was hired, she was she was up for the job. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear more from Thel Reed about what his daughter told him happened on the set of Rust and where she was when the gun went off. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Las Vegas. If you are a Zoom user or if you use TikTok, you maybe do a little cash. It's because of some class action lawsuit settlements. And as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains, it's up to you to claim it. The pandemic brought on a Zoom boom, gatherings by video conferencing. Now users maybe do some cash. Zoom settled an $85 million class action lawsuit. It accused the company of sharing users' personal info with third parties without consent and not doing enough to prevent Zoom bombings. The company denies any wrongdoing. Here's who's eligible. Between March 2016 and July of this year, if you paid for a Zoom meetings app subscription, you may receive about $20. $25. If you simply used it, you could get $15. But if you only used an enterprise level account or a government account, then you're not eligible. Claims have to be filed by March the 5th. We have a link to do that on our website. Now TikTok, the popular social media app for sharing short videos. Its parent company, ByteDance, settled a $92 million class action, accusing it of violating data privacy law, which the company denies. If you or your kids use TikTok before October 1st, you can file a claim for a small piece of the payout. That deadline is March the 1st. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, we should probably check in with one of the biggest TikTok users I know, and that'd be uh, Mike Osterhage. Yes. I'm sure you <laughs> do lots of money. He rolls his eyes. <laughs> morning, Mike. Hi. How, how are, are you? Good. It's Good. cold out there this morning. Yeah. It feels wonderful. That front moved through, got rid of all the humidity. We do still have a few clouds hanging around here, and uh, it's acting like a little bit of a blanket. What's interesting is we've got a couple little uh, sprinkly showers that have been sliding on through the area, but with the, the dew points so far below the actual air temperature, like I said, a lot of that is just evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. So we've got these numbers, dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere down in the, the 30s and even mid 20s and so it's a really dry layer of air and as a matter of fact compared to yesterday at this time I don't know if you remember I was saying yeah these numbers are going to be about you know 30 35 degrees lower by this morning 44 degrees lower for the dew point temperature than what it was at this time yesterday morning because it was so humid out there and even uh 29 below what it was yesterday up there in Kerrville. So here's the uh, what is the uh, computer model, pardon me, over the next couple of hours. And we've got this flow coming in here out of the southwest and a couple of these little sprinkly showers. But again, they are evaporating before they ever reach the ground. So it's not really going to do anything. I doubt if you even see a sprinkle or two. And we'll have some clouds hanging around here this morning. And then a lot of sunshine later on this afternoon. Good looking day. Mid 40s to start off, mid 60s to finish up. Those are the normal average temperatures this time of year. And then we'll have a couple of more clouds hanging around here tomorrow. I don't think it's going to be quite this this overcast, but going to have a partly cloudy skies by the afternoon tomorrow, and that's going to also signal the beginning of the warming trend as we go on in here. Maybe a couple of sprinkles by late tomorrow night into early Thursday morning. One thing for sure, though, the humidity is definitely going to be coming back into the picture as we really starting on Wednesday, starting tomorrow and then going into Thursday and Friday. Very, very humid, dew points well up into the mid 60s again, kind of like what we had yesterday and on Sunday. Then another big front's gonna move through here just in time for the weekend. It's gonna knock the humidity on out of here. Cold temperatures, matter of fact, we're looking at some very cold temperatures once we get into Sunday morning. So here's a longer range model. Again, we've got some clouds hanging around here tomorrow. Thursday, a little bit more in the way of uh, some sunshine. Same thing on Friday. Saturday, as the front moves on, through. There is the chance for a couple of sprinkly showers. Uh, again, this is that 
broad brush model. Most of that's going to be well off to the east of us, and then we are going to be clearing out by uh, later in the day on Saturday, and then it gets really, really cold. Then by Sunday morning, we're looking at uh, probably some widespread freezing temperatures in portions of the uh, the hill country by Sunday morning. 60 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperatures then going to make it up to 65. Beautiful day, light jacket in the afternoon. Really pleasant out there. Wind's going to start to shift around to the south a little bit more. It is going to be chilly tomorrow morning, not as cold, and then we get up in the mid 70s, so about 10 above normal tomorrow. Then by the end of the week, we're going to be about 20 degrees above normal. The record both Thursday and Friday for each day is 85 degrees. Close to it Thursday, better shot at tying the record, maybe setting a new record high on Friday. Really hot and humid. Front comes through, clears us out. And then we go from 85 Friday to 36 Sunday morning. Yikes, that's going to be a shock. 50 degree temperature drop wow. in two days. Yep. So t-shirts and jackets. Yeah, Everything. jacket, t-shirt, flip-flops, jacket, yeah, heavy coat. Okay. Flip-flops and fleece. That's how we roll, <laughs> yeah, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. We'll have everything prepared. <laughs> About 10 till 5, 48 degrees. And coming up next, why is Spider-Man star? Tom Holland is trading in his web slingers for dancing shoes, plus a new show about Will Smith's real-life adventures. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick 3, 586, Fireball 2. Daily 4 numbers, 9861, Fireball 1. Cash 5, 1, 18, 25, 28, 35. And your Texas two-step, 5, 13, 31, 33, bonus ball 34. And your Powerball numbers, we have 3, 21, 38, 50, 59, Powerball 6, Power Play 3. Good luck. Actor Will Smith goes on Real Life Adventures, plus Spider-Man is going dancing. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Tom Holland is trading in his web slinger for dancing shoes. The Spider-Man No Way Home star announced he'll be playing legendary song and dance star Fred Astaire. Oh, I am playing Fred Astaire. Yeah. Holland does have a dance background. He began his acting career on the London stage, playing the title role in Billy Elliot, the musical. Welcome to Earth. Named after a line Will Smith said in the 1996 movie Independence Day. There's a new breed of explorers taking me to the ends of the earth to discover hidden worlds that sit beyond our senses. Welcome to Earth follows the actor through six adventures. The star goes from playing an action hero to living real life adventures, and he's not going it alone. In each installment, Smith's accompanied by experts, like polar explorer Dwayne Field, who drops out of a helicopter in the middle of an Icelandic glacier with Smith. The goal of this show is to showcase explorers who you wouldn't consider or, or people who you wouldn't have thought of as being explorers as explorers and they introduce you to a whole new world another episode features I'm smith traveling to an erupting volcano with a blind mountaineer welcome to earth premieres wednesday on disney plus and, and celebrating birthdays today oscar-winning actress ellen burston is 89 and nba hall of famer larry bird turned 65. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now is 4.55 and about 48 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, the dispute over Ukraine will be at the center of President Joe Biden's video meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin later today. Plus, two major companies are teaming up to provide you more content on a popular streaming service that's coming up in Tech Bytes. And here's the incident I briefly mentioned earlier, uh, 281 at Hildebrand. Some lanes are closed, look like uh, they're diverting all the traffic off the highway. We'll check in with Stephen coming up.
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this morning, President Joe Biden set to meet with Russia's pre president today to talk about an issue that's creating some of the deepest U.S.-Russian tensions in years. Back here at home this morning, 40s out there. and We've got traffic troubles on 281. We'll talk to Stephen in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 7th of December. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. And wow, what a difference from this morning from yesterday morning. Yeah, stay buckled in, though. This roller coaster continues in the coming <laughs> days. Here's Mike with more. So yesterday, we didn't need a coat in the morning, needed one by the afternoon or a light little jacket. This morning, definitely a coat. Uh, Flip-flops, shorts by the end of the week, another big heavy coat. Anyway, we'll get it all sorted out, but yeah, it's all over the place. Like Mark said, staying kind of buckled in here for the roller coaster ride. 48 degrees right now. We have dropped down a couple of more uh, notches. Notice that bottom number. Dew point is half of what the actual air temperature is, so the air is really, really dry, and that's important when it comes to the rain that's, that's being picked up on radar. Believe it or not, there is some out there. The Aquifer dropped down yesterday uh, one tenth of a foot, and the allergens mold is on the high side. We've got a puff of a breeze out there, and with these temperatures that are down in the 40s right now, just to you know what five six mile per hour winds. However, just enough to add a little bit of a uh, nip to temperature. So wind chills down to 44 here in town. 42 is what it feels like in Balverde. 30s in portions of the hill country. So again, just enough to add that little mm to these uh, temperatures when you walk outside. Here's what I was talking about with. Uh, some of this rain, these disturbances, computer models were picking this up yesterday, but again, the air is so dry, this is called Virga. It's evaporating before it ever reaches the ground, so we're not going to have to worry about anything like that. Just some clouds this morning, cold temperatures. Then, as we go in through the rest of the day, you're going to have lots of sunshine. Very, very nice. Mid-40s to start off this morning, uh, mid-60s later on this afternoon. Exactly what you would expect this time of year as far as average temperatures. Rest of the week, yeah, it is going to be heating up. As a matter of fact, you're going to be near record high temperatures by Friday shorts and flip flops, then you need a coat once again because we've got some December temperatures. Matter of fact, it's going to be really, really cold by Sunday morning. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve McVasos, first of all, good morning, sir. What's the big deal on 281? Yeah, good morning, Mike. Not looking great, especially if you're going to be traveling down 281. Mark had mentioned this a little bit earlier in the newscast. Let's take a closer look, find out what's happening out there. Uh, this shot at Trans Guide does show us that we have some flashing lights out there and some first responders. Uh, that's because some debris was detected out there along the highway. You can see at this moment traffic is being directed off of the highway. Uh, however, let's go in and see how that's impacting traffic because given the fact that it is 5 a.m., let's see how that could be impacting those lanes there. Uh, as of right now, we are starting to see a little bit of red and yellow building off 281 northbound again right at Hildebrand Avenue due to that debris. We'll continue to watch that throughout the morning, but hopefully that will be resolved before we start seeing more folks out of the roadway because we know this is a heavily traveled corridor throughout the morning, especially if you're traveling up on 281. Uh, but the the wider look at the map does show if we can uh, take a moment to show us the wider look. There we went back. There you go, guys. Uh, the wider look at the map does show we still have a lot of green lanes open on the screen. So that's some good news, especially if you're going to be traveling this early in the morning with the exception of 281 northbound. So just watch out there. Uh, but let's bring you to those inbound times because as of right now, it's still pretty much green across the board. If you're traveling in from I-10 and Bernie, 25 minutes at this hour to the downtown San Antonio area, 27 minutes coming in from 281 and Bulverde, and 26 minutes coming in from 35 and New Braunfels. So not looking bad there, but of course, right here on 281. It's not looking good, so we're going to watch this throughout the morning and give you all those updates right here on GMSA. Mark. Stephen, thank you. President Biden and Vladimir Putin scheduled to speak today amid growing concerns that Russia could be preparing to invade Ukraine, a U.S. ally. Last night, the head of the CIA addressed those concerns and what might happen if Putin sends troops across that border. ABC's Ike Jachi has the details. This morning, just hours before a video call between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin, the director of the CIA is giving a rare interview about the high-stakes meeting. What we've seen in recent weeks is a, a steady and unusual military buildup by the Russians along uh, Ukraine's borders. These satellite images show the Russian troops gathered on Ukraine's doorstep, sparking fears of an invasion. Biden's in a bind. On the one hand, if he pushes too far and tries to do things, for example, support Ukraine militarily, that looks provocative. On the other hand, if he backs away, he looks like he hasn't stood by an important U.S. friend. 
conflict has been simmering between Russia and Ukraine since 2014, when Russia seized control of Crimea, a strategic peninsula. CIA Director William Burns last night said Putin has not made up his mind whether to use force against Ukraine. But Burns added he would never underestimate Putin's, quote, risk appetite. It's always very difficult to gauge, um, you know, Putin's intent. I would never underestimate President Putin's risk appetite on Ukraine. The president's conversation was an opportunity to reinforce, to reemphasize, you know, the, um, the, the costs of a use of force, but to also emphasize of renewed military aggression, but to also emphasize the importance of de-escalation and a renewed effort at diplomacy. The White House says it's considering many options if Russia were to invade, including sanctions or meeting our NATO allies' request for additional forces. A senior administration official says President Biden will warn Putin of, quote, very real costs should Russia invade Ukraine. Telling ABC News the president will also make clear that there is an effective way forward with respect to diplomacy. The last known call between the leaders was in July, when Biden pressed Putin on Russian hackers launching cyber attacks. Ika Jachi, ABC News, New York. And here at home, South Sand ISD suspended Superintendent Mark Puig indefinitely last night. So Puig was the focus of a special meeting to discuss comments he made to board president Ernesto, Ernesto Ariano Jr. when a mic was accidentally left on. So after a closed session meeting, the board voted to suspend Puig with pay, but took no action against Ariano. The board voted to ask that Henry Izaguirre, a former candidate for the superintendent job, be asked to serve as interim superintendent. Puig stormed out of the meeting after the board voted on his suspension. Many board members sang praises for Izaguirre, saying he'll be the one to unite the school district following decades of dysfunction. Democracy is very messy, and so this is messy. Uh, they have their issues to resolve, but they can also spend more time uh, showing the responsibility back towards the district as a group and reassuring the teachers, the students, the parents, the taxpayers, uh, and potential employees that everything is going on uh, in South Sand to better the education standards. Puig is the seventh superintendent for the district in 10 years. He started in June of 2020. The TEA has launched countless investigations against the district. The latest one announced last week. Only one community member and a teacher union representative showed up to speak at last night's meeting. Today, one of the biggest breast cancer symposiums in the world is starting here in San Antonio. KSAT will be there talking to experts about the latest treatments and research surrounding breast cancer. And you can get involved, too. All you have to do is scan the QR code on your screen with your iPhone or your phone, rather. It'll guide you to our website. From there, let us know what you want to know about regarding the latest treatments and innovations. The Breast Cancer Symposium goes through Friday. And time now, it's 5.07 and about 48 degrees out there. Still ahead, we'll tell you how WhatsApp is expanding its disappearing messages feature. Also next, a closer look at how new COVID travel rules could impact the travel industry and the overall U.S. economy. Outside with live cam, very chilly, more like December out there right now. We've got a plane coming into San Antonio International Airport. The heat will be back, though, and in another big two cool down. Are you tracking all this? We're going to use a giant dry erase board with Mike Ostrage <laughs> coming up. 511, welcome back. We previewed this for you yesterday right here on The Morning Show. Strict new COVID testing rules for travelers coming into the United States are now in effect. CNN's Jen Sullivan looks at how this latest round of rules could affect the ways you travel. Stricter testing rules now in effect. All travelers, including U.S. citizens coming into the U.S., are now required to test negative for coronavirus one day before their departure. This is not the first month we've ever dealt with this, so we're ready, we're armed. Captain Dennis Tager from the Allied Pilots Association says the airline industry supports the move. The CDC's new testing rule is regardless of vaccination status. It's aimed at curbing the potential threat posed by the Omicron variant. Making sure that that test is as close to travel date as possible uh, will help catch more infections before they come to the U.S. This comes as the travel industry was beginning to catch a break and look forward to a robust holiday travel season, leading some industry leaders to worry the move may lower consumer confidence and reduce travel. 
they may have seen some some advanced uh, bookings fall off. I, I would expect that's just natural behavior. While praising the move, health experts acknowledge that testing may be an added burden for travelers. The downside is it's going to get harder for travelers to always be able to find a high quality PCR that they can get a result from within a day. Meanwhile, Captain Tager says in order for economic recovery to get back on track, the airline industry can't have any scheduling meltdowns after severe weather events. It shakes the confidence and it rattles the recovery. We're going to make sure that we do all that we can to make it work. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 513, about 47 degrees. And still ahead, Google TV has teamed up with Pluto TV, what that means for your home entertainment. Plus YouTube Music rolling out a 2021 recap feature. jewelry and receive a free sterling silver bangle as our special gift to you with age comes more get more with neutrogena retinol pro plus a powerful 0.5 percent retinol that's also gentle on skin for wrinkle results in one week neutrogena for people with skin and where down we go Aqua de Jo and Aqua de Jo Profondo, Giorgio Armani, at Macy's, the fragrance destination. 516, WhatsApp has expanded the options for deleting new messages and chats. ABC's Aika Jachi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, WhatsApp is upgrading its feature that makes your messages disappear. Users can now turn on disappearing messages by default to automatically delete after a set period of time. And there are more time frames to choose from, so messages can vanish in 24 hours, 7 days, or 90 days. Google TV is partnering with Pluto TV to provide more free programming. More than 300 ad-supported channels will be added to the Live tab. There will also be recommendations in the For You tab. Finally, YouTube Music's answer to Spotify Wrapped. It's called 2021 Recap, and it shows users their top artists, songs, music videos, and playlists from this past year. There's an option to listen to your favorite picks of the year, and it can be all shared through social media. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 517. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Are there still problems out there at Hildebrand? Uh, well, the good news is uh, that problem looks like it has resolved, so we're seeing some delays there. We're going to get to that in just a moment, uh, but we do have some construction that happened that looks like it just wrapped up here along 35 at Loop 1604. So right now, construction seems to be the ongoing issue this morning, but let's take a look, see how that could impact that morning drive time. Taking you right to the map, the first place we're going to start is right here along 410. Some paving operations. We told you about this yesterday. Yesterday, but this should be wrapping up tomorrow. It's uh, going to be leading to a single right lane closure on the southbound main lanes from Ray Ellison Boulevard, Boulevard that is to Old Pearsall Road. Uh, again, this starts overnight, but we'll be wrapping up by five in the morning, so it looks like we're not seeing any issues out there right now. So some good news. Now to that problem on 281. Let's take a jump over here where we did have some uh, big delays there off 281 northbound at Hildebrand. You can see that we're seeing some progress there along the lanes. A little stretch of orange indicates that traffic is moving, still not very fast, but that debris looks like it has picked up and first responders have cleared out there. So some good news there. Taking a jump up here to where we just showed you 35 or loop 164 south and I 35 uh, still trying to pinpoint a time when this takes place, but we know that it is overnight and it does look like they wrapped up before we start seeing traffic really moving. A uh, wider look at the map does show that it is still pretty much green on the screen. So good news if you're heading out the door in the next few moments, grab that cup of coffee and enjoy the drive to work or maybe to drop your kiddo off to school this morning. We'll continue to keep a close eyes here on the road, guys. Thank you, Steve. And drop down a degree since we started this morning. Mike, feeling very much like the mid 40s out there. Yeah, and there's a little bit of a breeze, not much, but just mm. enough to add that little, you know, mm, to these temperatures. <laughs> and uh, but this is exactly what you would expect this time of year. The average uh, low temperatures, mid 40s, average high is mid 60s. So we're going to be 
normal today, if you will, and got some clouds hanging around here. The humidity really dropped off compared to yesterday. Of course, it was a very, you know, Sunday was warm and humid and yesterday was very warm and humid. Then the front moved through, cleared everything on out of here, at least as far as the humidity and temperatures. And we're going to stay very low with humidity throughout the rest of today. But then by tomorrow morning, so we've got dew points down in the mid 20s right now. We gain about 20 degrees in the next 24 hours as far as dew point temperatures, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere and then those numbers will continue to go up as we go into the afternoon tomorrow. So you're going to kind of feel it a little bit more with these dew points getting up at 60 or above that. That's the threshold and those numbers continue to go up going into tomorrow evening, Thursday as well as Friday. It's going to be basically just hot and humid. I mean, we're looking at low to mid 80s by Thursday and Friday around here. And again, we're talking about flirting with the record high temperatures. We've got this flow coming in here out of the southwest. Yes, there are a couple of sprinkles being detected on radar. They are not reaching the ground because the air is so dry right now. It's evaporating before it ever reaches the ground and around the country. A lot going on out there to the west of us, but just take note this huge storm complex moving through. I mean, a lot of lake effects snow around the Great Lakes and this line right here. That cold front, that's the same one that moved through yesterday and boy oh boy you think it's chilly around here it is 13 degrees below zero that's the actual air temperature right now at international falls 35 memphis but you factor in the wind it feels like 29 single digits negative numbers up there around the great lakes so just a huge arctic blast so we're on the kind of the leading edge of that as of right now yes a little bit of a wind chill around here feels like 44 degrees that's uh cool enough and as far as the next couple of days we get the big warm-up moving on in here Trough kind of builds out to the west of us, and this ridge is going to start to build to the east that high. And so we get this southwesterly flow in the atmosphere, and that's what's going to really help to warm things up. This is going into Friday, then Friday night, Saturday. Here's the front, that dip right there. That comes through here. That brings in colder air, and it's going to get pretty darn cold around here. We're looking at mid-30s by Sunday morning, but another big trough develops out there to the west of us going into the first part of next week, and that high moves in, and that's going to then tend to warm things up going into next week. So this big roller coaster action we got going on here is going to continue, it looks like, at least for the next week. So today, Beautiful day, some clouds this morning, and then partly cloudy skies by noon up to 60. High temperature up to 65, and that's the normal high just about this time of year. Mostly sunny skies. Tomorrow morning, it's going to be chilly, not as cold, and then the humidity really starts to come back in here. We get a high temperature of 75 tomorrow, so add 10 degrees to today's high, then add another 10 to that as we go into Thursday and Friday. It's going to be just hot and humid, and the front moves through late Friday night, Saturday. Then back down to the 60s by the weekend. Good looking weekend. Nice and cool. Beautiful winter. Well, almost winter, late fall weather and 36 Sunday morning. Almost get whiplash watching this forecast. <laughs> I know. I know. It's up, I, again, I pointed out last half hour, 50 degree difference between the high Friday, the low Sunday. Unbelievable. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be interesting just to keep up with everything. Keeps you on your toes. Yes, yes it is interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. 522 on your Tuesday morning right now, about 47 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Drake pulls out of the Grammys, plus Billie Eilish unveils a new music video. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 586, Fireball 2. If you're just now waking up, I'll do the Daily Four in a much quieter tone. <laughs> 9861 with a Fireball of 1. Cash 5, 1, 18, 25, 28, 35. And Texas 2 Step 5, 13, 31, 33, bonus ball 34. And your Powerball numbers we have 3, 21, 38, 50, 59, Powerball 6, Power Play 3. Good luck. Your voice is calming too. <laughs> Automatically. Back to sleep. <laughs> Wake up, everybody. We'll be right back. Voting has just begun for this year's Grammy Awards. But one of the nominees appears to have taken himself out of the running. Seeing as David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Too sexy for the Grammys? According to multiple reports, Drake has asked the Recording Academy to withdraw his two Grammy nominations for this year, and the Academy has done so. Drake was up for Best Rap Album for Certified Lover Boy and Best Rap Performance for Way Too Sexy. No word why Drake made the request. I got a call from a girl I used to know. We were inseparable. 
years ago. Billie Eilish's album Happier Than Ever is up for seven Grammy Awards, and she's just unveiled her latest music video from the album, Male Fantasy, which she directed and edited. It's been a doubly magical year for Stephanie Beatriz. She's sung the songs of her old friend Lin-Manuel Miranda as Mirabelle in Encanto and as Carla in In the Heights. Lin and I have known each other since we were in our 20s in New York, both struggling artists and, you know, it feels very incredible to have collaborated with him not once but twice now in my career. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, about 47 degrees. And still ahead, the U.S. is now averaging more than 100,000 new COVID-19 cases a day. Why health experts say you should still be on the lookout for the Delta variant? Uh, plus, your prescription medication could soon be delivered to your door by drone. We'll tell you how that will work. And if someone wouldn't want to touch you with the 39 and a half foot pole, you might be interested in staying at the Grinch Cave. We're going to tell you about this unique holiday experience. I see, working in the Grinch lyrics there. Are you trying to incorporate exercise into your life but simply don't know where to begin? We've got some best practices ahead this morning later on GMSA at 6. Making headlines this morning as more coronavirus cases pop up every day again. Why health officials say the Delta variant is still causing problems. And taking a look outside with live cam, the roller coaster ride has begun. We're at 47 degrees right now, and by the end of the week, maybe the 80s? A good, lot. Morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, December 7th. Thanks for joining us. I was just saying it's a lot, uh, a lot of changes there. Uh, kind of exciting this week. The, as we were saying earlier, the AC and the furnace both get a workout this week. Mike Oster, H, good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, we're going to see temperatures. I mean, between this morning's temperature and by Friday, a 40 degree swing, and then even colder the other direction. So yeah, we're looking at a huge roller coaster this week as far as temperatures are concerned. Right now, we are at uh, 48 degrees. The dew point is half of that. Very very dry air out there right now with that front that moved on through here. Wind is also out of the north at eight miles per hour so that does give us a little bit of a uh, wind chill uh, 5 10 mile per hour winds around here so feels like 44 in town 30s in portions of the hill country and there is some rain being detected on radar it's this little disturbance moving across here there's no rain reaching the ground because like i said the air is so dry so it's all evaporating before it ever reaches the uh, the ground mold is on the high side updated counts going to be coming up a little bit later on this morning and it's probably going to be dropping down given the fact we got such dry air out there 60 at noon today 65 for a high temperature, so mid 40s, mid 60s, exactly the normal average temperatures this time of year. We'll have mostly clear skies tonight. Now this is all going to be changing. We'll start to see more humidity. We're going to start to warm up tomorrow, really warm up by the end of the week, and then really cool down by the end of the weekend. Some of the coldest temperatures so far this season we're going to be looking at by Sunday morning. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. So we had that big problem on 21 that's cleared up. Now what? Cleared up. Now we got a stall, Mike. So wow. it seems when one issue resolves, we have another one that pops up here. Let's take a look. Right now, this is a shot from Loop 410 at Somerset Road. We do have some flashing lights out there, and it looks like one of those TxDOT Hero trucks assisting that driver. Now keep in mind, this is a pretty narrow area to drive through there off 410, so make sure that you're driving if you have to drive through there and you see a stalled vehicle just like that, move over or slow down because we want to make sure that driver receives assistance and we want to make sure that driver with the Texas Hero truck is able to assist that driver with no problems. Uh, but let's take you right to the map though. That is detected off those eastbound lanes at Somerset Road, or 410 that is, uh, right at Somerset Road, not causing any issues, but again, drive carefully through that area. A wider look at the map does show we still have pretty much a lot of green across the screen, so uh, it's not looking too bad for this Tuesday morning. We did have that debris off 281 that was causing a little bit of delays on those northbound lanes, but thankfully that has since cleared out. So let's go ahead and check out those inbound times if you plan on traveling to San Antonio and we don't have those, but we will have those coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Just remember to watch out when you see those flashing lights, guys. Good reminder. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, fire investigators believe a water heater may have been what a caused fire that sent three people running from their home. It broke out around three this morning in the 400 block of Sterling. That's near Interstate 10 and Martin Luther King Drive. Katrina Weber is live at the scene and says it may be some time before that family can return home. 
Well, firefighters tell me that there may be a few items that the family can salvage from inside, but they say other than that, this house has extensive damage. Now, this is the 400 block of Sterling. We're here on the east side, and uh, firefighters got the call here a little bit after 3 o'clock this morning. Now, if you look at the house, you can see that there is some damage. Some of the eaves are hanging down, but firefighters tell me inside is where the real damage is. They say there's smoke and fire damage throughout this house. There were three people here. According to firefighters, the father is the one who discovered the fire. He heard a crackling noise, thought it was his pets that were making noise, got up to check it out, and that is when he was hit in the face with smoke, according to firefighters. He then went around, made sure his family got out. All three of them escaped safely. But again, firefighters uh, did have a tough time putting this fire out and making sure uh, that all of the flames were out. They say by the time that happened, there was extensive damage throughout the house. Uh, they were making sure that the fire hadn't gotten up into the attic. And so uh, this family, again, displaced three people. But firefighters tell us that they will be staying with other relatives in the meantime. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, COVID-19 cases are on the rise again. And as seen as Brett Conway reports, Omicron is spreading. However, Delta is still a concern. This is the winter surge that so many of us predicted. A COVID-19 surge that's averaging more than 120,000 new cases and more than 1,600 deaths every day. As the weather turned colder, as we all started spending more time indoors, and as other layers of protection like masks and ventilation started to disappear, we were going to see increased case numbers. Public health officials say more than 99% of new cases are the Delta variant, but Omicron is spreading. Cases of the variant have been reported in at least 19 states. Emerging evidence shows it may spread more quickly than Delta, but possibly be less severe. From the virus's standpoint, it wants to do two things. It wants to become more contagious, that way it can continue to spread, but it also wants to become less virulent less likely to cause severe disease. It's never to the virus's advantages to kill you because then it can't be transmitted anymore. It needs you to reproduce itself. Which could play to our advantage. You have a virus then that could knock out a more virulent strain like Delta and, and evolve to what would be the best case scenario, evolve to essentially a common cold like virus. But experts say there's still more to learn about Omicron. In the meantime. Our best protection are these vaccines. I'm Britt Conway reporting. A commission set up by President Biden to explore changes to the makeup of the Supreme Court is having disagreements on whether or not to recommend adding more justices to the bench. The commission is set to vote today on finalizing its report. The draft version includes arguments for term limits for the nine justices. A seat on the Supreme Court is currently a lifetime appointment. The report comes as some polls show public approval for the Supreme Court may have dropped in recent months. A woman accused of late financier Jeffrey Epstein of sexual abuse testified Monday. The woman testifying under the pseudonym Kate took the stand to start the second week of Jelaine Maxwell's federal trial on charges including sex trafficking of minors. Kate is not considered a minor victim because she was over the age of consent at the time of the alleged abuse. But the judge ruled the jurors are still allowed to consider her testimony. Prosecutors say Maxwell and Epstein created a pyramid scheme of abuse to lure underage girls into sexual relationships with Epstein. Meanwhile, Maxwell's defense argues she was a scapegoat for Epstein's actions. Former Empire actor Jesse Smollett testified in his criminal trial on Monday. Smollett has denied that he staged an anti-gay racist attack on himself, saying that, quote, there was no hoax, end quote. Smollett is facing charges that he lied to Chicago police about the January 2019 attack downtown in Chicago. The 39-year-old is charged with six counts of disorderly conduct. He is refuting testimony from two brothers who said last week that Smollett orchestrated the assault and paid them $35 hundred dollars to carry it out. Smollett says the money was for meal plans and training. The charges to get Smollett are punishable by up to three years in prison and a twenty-five thousand dollar fine. 538 about 47 degrees. And still ahead if you're as cuddly as a cactus, well you might feel at home in the Grinch's cave. We're going to tell you about this unique holiday vacation getaway coming up. Do you see the cans of who hash? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty That's cute. so cool. Still ahead, forget waiting in line at the pharmacy. Why some of your prescriptions could soon arrive by airborne delivery from a drone.
and taking a look outside with live cam. If you get bored easily, we have great news for you. It'll be cold today and maybe warm by the end of the week and maybe cold again after that. So just hang on to your hats. We'll be right back. The pandemics may take out food, groceries, and prescription deliveries, a regular everyday thing. And now a team of scientists is working on using drones to deliver your medicine. Here's Ursula Perry with a first of a kind solution that could bring healthcare delivery closer than ever before. You might have heard them buzz or seen them overhead, but imagine these robots on a special medical mission. We are building telehealth drone that will have the ability to go inside people's homes. You heard right, inside the home, something that no one has been able to accomplish before. That's very, very challenging from technology point of view because once you go inside people's homes, you lose connection with the GPS. The University of Cincinnati engineers are designing and testing special sensors that would allow the drones to maneuver through a front door into a patient's living room carrying a tablet or smartphone. Patients would connect with a doctor for a telehealth appointment and access a special medical kit attached to the drone so they can measure and transmit health information. We'll be able to get a read on their heart rate. We'll be able to um, know what is their oxygen levels in their body. It's going to let uh, older people stay at home for, for longer time, uh, more independently. Landing a drone safely in your living room. These researchers hope it'll all be science and not just fiction. Researchers say the prototype is ready. It's already been tested inside people's homes, and they say it's going to be ideal for places like Texas, where people live in rural areas and maybe miles or hours away from adequate medical care. In fact, one in four people in the United States lacks a primary care physician or access to a health center. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. And time now, 5.43 and about 47 degrees out there. Up next, if you're a mean one, you can stay in a real life version of the cave featured in How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And welcome back, it's 546. In your morning consumer headlines, Jack in the Box is branching out from its popular burger business. The fast food chain just announced it has acquired Del Taco, the second largest Mexican fast food chain in the U.S. The deal is worth approximately $575 million and will bring Del Taco's more than 600 restaurants under Jack in the Box's brand. That means the combined company will have more than 2,800 locations across 25 states. The deal should be completed early next year. Ford Motor Company delaying its plans to have roughly 30,000 workers return to the office next year. The automaker now says those employees will not return to offices till March due to COVID concerns. Ford's office workers were originally set to head back next month. Its assembly line workers returned to work in May of last year. Ford says it does mandate that most of its salaried employees receive a COVID vaccine. And this is really cool. So we recently told you about the home alone house you can stay in for the holidays. But how about staying in the Grinch's cave high above Whoville? Vacation rental management platform Vacasa is teaming up with Dr. Seuss to bring you the ultimate holiday getaway. It's a recreation of the lair belonging to the Grinch from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, located on a remote property outside of Boulder, Utah. It's a massive 5,700 square foot foot room and each room, excuse me, place. Each room is decorated just as a Grinch himself would like. It even has a music room complete with the Grinch's organ and a dog Max's drum set. And in true Grinch fashion, there is no internet connection. <laughs> wow. Or TV. <laughs> Bookings are open for limited stays from December 13th through the 23rd, hmm, before Christmas. The rental is available from $19.50 per night to honor the book's original release. Wow. In 1957. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And not Boulder, Colorado, Boulder, right. Utah. Utah. I saw okay. that. Okay. Didn't know there was a Boulder, Utah. But it looks very creative, doesn't it? Very remote, very Grinch-like. Yes, ma'am. Would you give it a spin, Stephen? What do you think? I would, but you know, after watching the movies, I always felt like the Grinch's dwelling always looked like it smelled weird. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a pig <laughs> I don't know. It didn't that, say I'm sure it smells smell. great in there. This it, looked a lot cleaner It in looked neater. a lot cleaner, so maybe I'd give it a, give it a go. Why not? Uh, get in the Christmas spirit. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our roadways because things are shaping up to look a little bit busier than we anticipated. Uh, looks like we have a situation off here as US 90 at Nogalitas. We'll find out what's going on there, but you can see from these shots at Transguide, traffic 
traffic is getting moving, moving that is for this Tuesday morning, taking you right to the map though. We want to bring your attention to the stall that looks like it looks like it just cleared out off Loop 410 eastbound at Somerset Road. Not the only stall we spotted so far. Let's take another jump up over here because we have one detected all the way off I-35 southbound at Pat Booker Road. So make sure that you're watching out for those vehicles, especially those that are stranded along the highways. And it looks like another one may have popped up here along 410. Taking a wider look at the map, we are seeing a little stretch of red here off I-10 westbound. We'll find out what's going on there in just a moment. But those inbound times, as promised, we have them right here. So if you are coming in from Seguin, we're starting to see a little bit of a build up there coming in from Seguin on to the downtown San Antonio area. 32 minutes at this hour and 22 minutes coming in from Lavernia and 87 and 29 coming in from Floydesville. One last look around town 1604 at Spurs Ranch. Looks like things are getting moving for this traffic Tuesday, guys. Yes, they are. Thank you, Stephen. Would you stay there? And the, at the, gr the Grinch's, Grinch's cave? Mm -hmm. oh, I think that'd be cool. Grinch yeah. cave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I wonder who hash tastes. Is it like corned beef hash, I wonder? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, it looked like more than just props. Like, they actually put those labels on something. Watch, it's cat food or something like that. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> and to see who opens it. <laughs> and the roast beast and everything. And then talking about how you thought the... Yeah, probably smelled funny. Well, I'm sure hygiene was not his biggest priority. Yeah, it didn't look like it. No, anyway. but, uh, but the story goes he's turned over a new leaf, right? Mm -hmm. That's true, because right. his heart grew three times. So we've got some clouds hanging around here this morning, <laughs> and uh, it's pretty chilly out there. We've got some wind chill temperatures. Now, there's not a, a lot of, of a wind out there, but just enough to shave off a couple of, read, couple of numbers off of some of these readings. We've got 44 here in town. The actual air temperature is 48, and then it feels like 41 Balverde and 30s in portions of the hill country and uh, not much of a breeze, but again, just enough. The dew points, the measure moisture in the atmosphere have dropped down, uh, just plummeted from what it was yesterday. Of course, yesterday started off this time. It was very warm, very humid. Then that front moved on through. So these numbers have dropped down a good 30, 40, almost 45 degrees here in town. But that's not going to last all that long because those numbers are going to be definitely going back up as we go into the next couple of days. So your high temperature yesterday, and this is a little deceiving. This was early on in the morning and then the front moved through. We were about 60 or so in the afternoon. And then today we're going to be at 65 degrees, which uh, is just about uh, the average this time of year, 66 to be exact, and that's going to be the situation all around the area, mid to upper 60s. And I was talking about how the humidity and dew point temperatures are so low this morning, but they will definitely be coming back. So they'll be about 40 degrees higher by Thursday and Friday than they are right now, but then they're going to be dropping off another 40 degrees or so once we get into Saturday. So huge roller coasters with the humidity and a huge roller coaster over the next few days with temperatures. Computer model today, we've got a couple of showers that are actually being picked up on radar but they're, the air is so dry out there that they're evaporating before they ever reach the ground. And then what clouds we have right now are going to be clearing out by later on this afternoon. So good looking day, plenty of sunshine, nice temperatures, you know, sweater, light jacket if you want. Tomorrow we will have a few more clouds around here and Thursday as well. A couple of clouds hanging around Friday. I think we see a little bit more in the way of some sunshine. Still some of these clouds hanging on in here and then Friday night. Now again, Friday is going to be a hot and humid day. Then Friday night we have the front moving on through. It may squeeze out a couple of showers kind of doubtful one or two of them perhaps as it moves on through early early on Saturday morning then we're going to be clearing out on Saturday and uh, it's going to get much much colder than by Sunday morning so here's what's going on we've got kind of this zonal pattern these upper wind lines going straight west to east not a you know not anything that really brings any big changes to the weather, but uh, we start to get more of a southwesterly flow aloft and that's going to help to warm us up. And then that front again moves through here. That's going to be late Friday into Saturday, that dip right there. So cools us down after we get heated up. It's going to heat up again after that. So kind of all over the place. Welcome to San Antonio. If you're new to town, <laughs> that's what what usually happens this time of year. 60 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 65 today. That, again, is the just about the average normal high temperature. And tomorrow, still chilly in the morning, um, then very warm in the afternoon, 75. 60 to start off on Thursday, so we'll be about... Uh, 10, 15 degrees warmer, almost 20 degrees warmer by uh, Friday morning and uh, 85 Friday afternoon but then 36 Sunday morning. So if you're new to town and you're wondering, do you need a fireplace or a ceiling fan? The answer is yes. All of the you above. You mm -hmm. need all of them mm -hmm. this week, especially. And air, and air conditioning. And, and all that stuff. Your, your jackets and Shorts, your flip-flops. <laughs> ah, never a dull moment. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 553, about 47 degrees.
A new movie portrays a former Marine trying to save his sons from a mysterious threat. We're going to have a special preview next. This is Mission Control to J. I can't believe it's been two years since I saw you last. Riz Ahmed is a man on a mission to protect his sons in Encounter. I'm heading out on another secret mission. I want to come see you, but I need to keep fighting. These guys were brilliant. It was so much fun working with them. They taught me so much, kept me on my toes. Um, River was so focused and dedicated, a DTR. Um, I'd never even read the script. So both presenting different ways of working. So actually I had never experienced anything like this before because it was my first audition. So I had no idea. With a road trip at its center, much of the film takes place behind the wheel. I got a chance to do a little bit of stunt driving as well. And uh, um, there was this, the actual driver was on top of the car and he was doing all the actual pedaling and, and driving and stuff. You will always be a hero to your sons. I love the sci-fi elements. I love the psychological thriller. But when I enter, it becomes a bit of a mystery. And you realize it's from uh, Malik's perspective and how he views the world. You know, ever heard of the Three Musketeers? The toughest soldiers there ever was. They could survive anything because they stuck together. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead the next hour, Team USA, it's been 80 years since the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. We'll look back at that tragic day that brought the U.S. into World War II, changing history forever. And Transguide right now, flashing lights out there at 90 at Nogalitos. We'll try to find out what's going on. Stephen Cavazos is here, and the seesaw weather continues. Mike will have an update. It's a cold start to your Tuesday, December 7th. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. COVID-19 cases are surging ahead of the holidays and the Omicron variant is spreading to more states. How officials are responding coming up. The Silver and Black's win streak comes to an end last night against a Western Conference powerhouse team. But there's some good news for our Spurs. We have details. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's chilly out there. You're going to want to grab your jacket. We're starting at 47 degrees, but later in the week, Things are expected to change. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It is December 7th, and I'm reminded of Katy Perry's famous lyrics yet again. We're hot and we're cold. <laughs> Right. I mean, it's uh, this yes, week, we especially. Are. Yeah, it's, it'll be very interesting this week. I mean, sometimes there's like a week in between all the changes, but it, you know, this time it's happening all in one Jammed week. Jammed it all into one week. Yeah, we're hot and we're cold. We're in and out. We're yes and we're no. Good morning, Mike Osterhey. That's a very good way to sum it up. I mean, think about it yesterday. We were in the low 70s at this time in the morning, and now it's in the upper 40s, and then it's going to be 80s, and then it's going to be 30s, and yeah, all over the place. So uh, we'll get it all sorted out here. Just make sure you keep all your clothes handy. We have uh, mostly cloudy skies right now. Some uh, mid high clouds out there. 47 is current temperature, so we've dropped down another degree. Mid 30s, a couple of 36s there in Kerrville as well as Comfort. 44 in Balverde. And there's a slight breeze out there this morning, so wind chill temperatures knock off just a couple of degrees. Feels like 41 Bernie Stage as well as Balverde and uh, 45 here in town. So not much of a wind chill, but again, just enough to add that that little something to these uh, cold temperatures. But these are what you would expect this time of year, just about normal. Mold is on the high side. The updated allergy count is going to be coming up in uh, about, uh, say, an hour, hour and a half or so. 45, so we'll drop down another couple of degrees this morning. And the wind is going to be shifting around out of the south. It's still going to be a really, really nice day. We're going to make it up to right around 60 today at noon. We'll have some clouds hanging around here this morning, and then those will continue to clear on out. And a high temperature up to 65. That's the normal high temperature as well this time of year. So just a fantastic day. Then it's going to start to change. We will begin to warm up. The humidity is going to come back in here. It's going to be hot and humid. Then it's going to be really cold again. So all those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Like that Katy Perry song, Mike. You know, no one ever sings about traffic, but uh, maybe Olivia Rodrigo driver's license. Only one I can think of right now. Uh, but right now, speaking of traffic, things are picking up here off 604 Spurs Ranch. Uh, in some areas, still pretty quiet, though. It's still a little bit after 6, so not a lot of folks out on the roadways at this hour. But we know that will change when more folks uh, get ready for that morning rush and get ready to start their new day. Uh, 
uh, let's take you right to the map because we did have a stall off Loop 410 eastbound at Somerset Road that is cleared out. So some good news there. We're going to do some jumping over here because we still have this stall off of I-35 southbound at Pat Booker Road. And, and I meant to take a jump right back over here to US 90 eastbound at Nogolitos. We saw some flashing lights out there. Another stall detected right in that area. So that is a trending problem at this time. You can see another stall right there off 410 northbound at Rigsby Avenue. Wider look at the map does show that the lanes are still pretty much green, but it looks like we're starting to see another more of these stalls popping up. New one off 1604 near 281. So we'll check that out. See how that could be impacting the morning drive. But those inbound times, thankfully, still pretty much green across the board. 28 minutes coming in from 37 and Pleasanton. 17 minutes coming in from 35 and Lytle. Highway 90, just 19 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. Let's take one last look around town. 35 at Loop 1604. Things are getting moving for this Tuesday morning, guys. Stephen, thank you. Strange noises in the night may be what saved an east side family from a fire. Firefighters say those sounds woke up one person in the home. And he then got his family out safely. Katrina Weber is live where it happened. The 400 block of Sterling near I-10 and Martin Luther King. And Katrina, we understand they are looking at a water heater as a possible cause of this fire. Well, that's right. Firefighters say the reason for that is the fire seems to have started on the back right corner of the home, and that's exactly where that water heater was. It did not stay there, though. That fire spread, and what wasn't damaged by it has smoke or water damage. The fire broke out around 3 o'clock this morning. San Antonio firefighters say the man who lives here woke up initially thinking his cats were making noise. He got into his wheelchair, went into the next room to investigate. The firefighters say that's when he was hit by a wall of smoke. That man then went and got his wife and daughter out of the home safely. There were no injuries. The firefighters put out the fire, but again, they say that it did cause extensive damage throughout that home. And they say that the family now is able to stay with relatives in the meantime, but they won't be able to come back here for quite some time. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio fire investigators looking into what they are calling a suspicious fire that happened overnight on the northwest side. This happened around 1 this morning on Whitby Road near Hebner, and that's where crews say they found a fire in a laundry room of the retreat apartments. Fire crews were able to knock it out quickly. No one was hurt, and the cause remains unknown at this time. Man's in the hospital after he was struck by a vehicle. It happened around 9 last night in South Bear County near Vaughn Army by Highway 16 and Brentwood. Deputies say the driver who hit him stayed at the scene to help and is not facing charges. The man who was hit is expected to be okay. South San ISD suspended Superintendent Mark Puig indefinitely last night. Puig was a focus of a special meeting to discuss comments he made to board president Ernesto Ariano Jr. when a mic was accidentally left on. After a closed session meeting, the board voted to suspend Puig with pay, but took no action against Ariano. The board voted to ask that Henry Izaguerre, a former candidate for the superintendent job, be asked to serve as interim superintendent. Now, Puig stormed out of the meeting after the board voted on his suspension. Many board members say pra saying praises for Izaguera, saying he'll be the one to unite the school district following decades of dysfunction. Democracy is very messy, and so this is messy. Uh, they have their issues to resolve, but they can also spend more time uh, showing the responsibility back towards the district as a group and reassuring the teachers, the students, the parents, the taxpayers, uh, and potential employees that everything is going on uh, in South Sand to better the education standards. Puig is the seventh superintendent for the district in 10 years. He started in June of 2020. The TEA has launched countless investigations against the district. The latest one announced last week. Only one community member and a teacher union representative showed up to speak at last night's meeting. The COVID-19 variant Omicron continues to spread rapidly across the country with more and more states confirming cases, including here in Texas, after a positive case was confirmed in Houston yesterday. It's prompting new vaccine mandates in New York and revised recommendations by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. ABC's M. Wen is in Washington with the latest. COVID-19 cases surging in the U.S., up 27 percent in the last week. The new Omicron variant popping up in a growing number of states. We've not only had uh, an incredible COVID surge, um, but also a COVID surge of those that are critically ill. 
At least 19 states have confirmed cases of the Omicron variant. The latest cases in Texas and Hawaii, where the patients reported no travel. Others, like in Minnesota and Mississippi, reported recent travel to New York, where Mayor Bill de Blasio just announced a vaccine mandate that's being called the first in the nation of its kind. Vaccination is the central weapon in this war against COVID. Effective December 27th, all private sector's employees will have to have one dose of the vaccine. Children 5 to 11 will also need proof of one dose to enter restaurants, gyms and entertainment venues. And anyone 12 and older will need to show two vaccine doses. I think it's protective of our family and also protective of other people. There's no need for any of this. Pediatric virus infections are also climbing. Last week, another 133,000 children tested positive. More than 7 million children have contracted COVID since the start of the pandemic. As winter nears, the CDC now urging people to use rapid tests before heading to an indoor gathering, regardless of vaccination status. Starting this weekend in France, nightclubs must close for four weeks in response to the rise in COVID cases. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. In your other morning headlines, today marks 80 years since the surprise attack on the U.S. Naval Base of Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. The attack on the base to, on December 7, 1941, took 2,390 American lives. Today, about 30 survivors and 100 other veterans of the war are expected to participate in a ceremony at the pier overlooking the USS Arizona. They will observe a moment of silence at 7.55 a.m., the minute the attack began decades ago. Japanese forces attacked Pearl with torpedo planes, bombers, and fighters on the morning of December 7th in the hope of destroying the U.S. Pacific Fleet. The attack led the U.S. to enter World War II and eventually defeat Japan in August of 1945 following the U.S. atomic bomb attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. President Joe Biden is ready to warn Vladimir Putin during a video call later today that Russia will face economy-jarring sanctions if it invades neighboring Ukraine. President Biden is seeking a diplomatic solution to deal with the tens of thousands of Russian troops massed near the Ukraine border. White House officials say Biden will make clear that his administration is prepared to put new sanctions in place against the Kremlin that would have huge costs for the Russian economy. Putin, meanwhile, is expected to demand guarantees from Biden that the NATO military alliance will never expand to include Ukraine. Biden has said he will not accept such red lines. At a court order, the White House has reinstated a Trump-era immigration program, which sends migrants to Mexico while they wait for an immigration hearing here in the U.S. The policy now back in effect in El Paso, months after a judge ruled the Biden administration could not terminate the program. The administration says they will appeal the ruling. In the meantime, the White House has promised migrants enrolled in the program will have improved access to lawyers and quicker case turnaround. Right now, 611, about 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, you may have seen Spotify's recap feature in your friends' Instagram stories. Now YouTube has its version of a yearly music recap. Those details ahead. Outside with live cam, no doubt about it, it is colder this morning. That front blew through yesterday. You're looking back towards downtown, we're not seeing the fog that we saw, it seems like, for the last week or so on or off. How much of a warm up today and then when's our next heat wave? Yes, heat wave. It's coming. We'll be back. And welcome back at 615. Looking to hang on to employees. Meet giant Tyson Foods now says it will pay about $50 million in bonuses this year. About 86,000 Tyson employees will be eligible for the bonuses, ranging from $300 to $700. Speaking of meats, new reports say chicken tenders are in very short supply, with prices up since last year, but some experts say it's not as much as a shortage, just tight supply, blamed mostly on extraordinarily high demand and a lack of workers to produce more product. Topping today's Tech Bytes, WhatsApp upgrading its feature that makes your messages disappear. Users can now turn on disappearing messages by default to automatically delete after a set period of time. And there are more time frames to choose from, so messages can vanish in 24 hours, 7 days, or 90 days. Google TV partnering with Pluto TV to provide more free programming. More than 300 ad-supported channels will be added to the Live tab. There will also be recommendations in the For You tab.
YouTube has a music's answer to Spotify Wrapped. It's called 2021 Recap, and it shows users their top artist songs, music videos, and playlists from this past year. There's an option to listen to your favorite picks of the year, and it can all be shared through social media. And we know Steven is working on his playlist right now. <laughs> listen, I have to, do, I have to make a, 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 a statement here. The first thing that came to my head was Olivia Rodrigo's driver's license because right. I may or may not have been listening to that on the way to work. Ah. I know there's a ton of traffic songs out there <laughs> and I will add those to my playlist before driving into work this morning or next tomorrow morning. But if you're going to be driving into work this morning, let's see what you can expect right now for this early morning drive. 37 at Southeast Military. Pretty quiet there. US 90 in Ogolitos. Looks like we still have that stalled vehicle out there. So watch out for that driver. Uh, other areas do show that traffic is picking up in a lot of these spots. So make sure that you are taking it easy and have the right playlist on your way to work this morning. Taking you right to the map, though, we do have that stall again, a loop 410 eastbound at Somerset Road. Been there for a little while now. A jump up over here. We have a lot of jumping to do this morning. Has the same stall off I-35 South and at Pat Booker Road. We're seeing a lot of the same issues still presenting themselves. You saw this one here off US 90 eastbound at Nogalitos and a jump up over here does show that we have one off loop 410 northbound at Rigsby Avenue. Another wider scope does show we have that one off 1604 at 281 and I even think we get a close look here. So the map's a little all over the place this morning. So a lot of those issues seem to be scattered. This one right off Stone Oak Parkway. Make sure you're checking those vehicles this morning and watching out for those drivers. But more importantly, make sure you are taking it easy on your way to work. Guys, thank you very much. Remember, I can't drive 55 life in the fast lane. Mm -hmm. um, other ones like that. Yes, I, I anything will. from the band traffic. Yeah, we, we, we have them now. Yeah. Everybody knows what we've been doing during the commercial breaks this <laughs> yes. morning. Yes, I've been Googling so, guys. I have been yeah. Googling. I got to share something with you. I walked into work this morning and there was a small gift bag on my desk. And this is what I got from Mrs. Guajardo and everybody. Oh, that's cool. And nice. the weather department wow. did these ornaments. And those are I don't know if it's cross stitch or just embroidery, mm -hmm. um, but these are done in the wreath, the penguin and of course, the, uh, nice. the Texas flag there and from Mrs. Guajardo. She has done this in the past. Santa Claus is we've, over the years, uh, snowman, candy canes, and the little enclosure card says, from home to home and heart to heart, from one place to another, the warmth and joy of this gift brings us closer to each other. How sweet. Thank you. That just made my day. I mean, seeing this, this beautiful little gift bag there on my desk. So thank you so very much. Very nice. Really appreciate very that. Cool. Okay, hitting the hitting the roads this morning as we go back to what Stephen was talking about <laughs> and riding in the bus 45 degrees most the cloudy skies so uh, grab a jacket and you know you can kind of keep it handy throughout the day you get in the uh, get in the shadows a little bit of a breeze out there it's gonna be kind of kind of chilly 65 mostly sunny skies a, a perfect late fall day this these numbers are exactly what we would expect this time of year we do like I said have a couple of clouds hanging around here and uh, the humidity is quite low this morning There's, What's interesting is there's actually some rain being picked up on radar, but the air is so dry in the lower levels of the atmosphere, it's all evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. So this came in, obviously this dry air came in when that front moved through here yesterday. It's gonna stay very pleasant today, but notice by tomorrow, dew point temperatures go up at least 20 degrees. So humidity starts to work its way back on in here. And then by the afternoon, it's gonna go up probably another 15 to 20 degrees. So by the afternoon tomorrow, we're actually gonna to start to feel some of the humidity out there, especially down to the southeast along the coastal plain and even by tomorrow night and, and Thursday morning. Yeah, it's going to be humid once again, so it'll feel like yesterday morning before the the front moved on through here. So humidity comes back up into Thursday, Friday and temperatures are going to be going neck and neck with that. As a matter of fact, we are going to be about 20 degrees warmer Friday afternoon than what we will be today. Mid 60s today, mid 80s by Friday, but then a front moves through here and that's going to knock the humidity out of here and get some cold air back on in here and it's going to be really, really darn cold by Sunday morning. So I was talking about some of those sprinkles being picked up on radar right now. This flow aloft in the atmosphere coming on in here, uh, but again, it's so dry here at the surface that that's all evaporating and around the country. A lot going on off to the west of us, but this is really going to sort of avoid us. It's going to be sort of pushed up north of here and off to the east. There was that big storm system. That's the front that moved on through, and that's what brought in the colder temperatures for us. A lot of sunshine today. A few more clouds hanging around here tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. We'll have a lot of morning cloudiness, uh, some sunshine mixed in in the afternoon. As the front moves through here, it may squeeze out a couple of showers early Saturday morning. 
that'll be about it. And then things are going to be clearing out nicely. And like I said, it's going to be cold, but it's going to be just a fantastic weekend this weekend. 60 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And then a high temperature today makes it up to 65. That's what you would expect this time of year. Tomorrow morning, it's still going to be cool. Not as cold, 75 then in the afternoon, so it's going to be getting hotter and then really hot, flirting with records. Good shot at uh, at least tying the record on Friday of 85 degrees. Then the front's going to cool us back down for the weekend and 36 Sunday morning. All right, I got another one for you. December 7, 2017, snow was accumulating in parts of Bear County just four years ago on this date. Oh, wow. December 17th. 2017. Yeah, I lived at the time out near Gray Forest and mm -hmm. there was snow all over the ground that evening around 6 or 7 p.m. Do you remember those flurries at all? I, I don't. No? Oh, oh, no, I do. Yeah. No, I do. I do. That's right. It was, uh, we were excited about it. They, they were sending crews to the Alamo to get pictures. Now yep. I do remember. And I and actually, that's what we, we did a last minute impromptu oh. like Christmas card yes, 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 yes. <laughs> with a picture because of the I do flurries. remember that now. Yeah, yeah we had just a couple little couple inches yes. right there. Yeah, it seems like yeah. 14 years ago, yes, but it was, it, was. Just, it was just four. At first, I was like, what are you talking about, Mark? But I yes. clearly and, remember. And that. I normally get that response anyway. I know. <laughs> and my, and my <laughs> what are you talking about, Mark? <laughs> playing, with, playing and they made a little yes. you know, snowman about the yeah. so uh, It was a great day, just four years. Years ago. 622, about 47 degrees on your December 7th, 2021. And the Spurs winning streak unfortunately came to a halt last night. However, the Silver and Black will get to spend some time at home. We're going to have a preview coming up. Why hide your skin? If Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixent, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes, or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent, a breakthrough eczema treatment. First win streak comes to an end at the hands of the defending Western Conference champion Phoenix Suns. San Antonio off to a fast start last night. Suns trailed for a majority of the first half. All five San Antonio starters scored in double figures, led by DeJounte Murray, 17. In the end, not enough. Spurs had their four-game game win streak rather snap. Phoenix wins it 108-104. Good news, Spurs are set to begin a five-game homestand, starting with the New York Knicks tonight. Tip-off, that game is set for tonight at 7.30 over at the AT&T Center. All right, go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Time now, 626 and about 47 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, an arrest has been made in connection to a deadly shooting on the city's east side. We're going to have those details for you. And we have had some tra traffic troubles this morning. Right now you're looking live at I-35 at 1604. There's 35 at Loop 410. We'll get up to speed with your morning commute and Stephen Cavazos. After the break, stick around. Things go bump and pop in the night, and one family may be glad about that. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio firefighters say that is what alerted them to a fire in their home. I'll tell you more about it. Jackets on, maybe a pair of gloves. We're seeing some clearing skies right now. Very cold out there compared to the weather we've seen over the last few days, but just wait. We're going to be back in flip-flops in a matter of days. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, the 7th of December. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I hope you're prepared for all the changes. I mean, I guess a good, you know, some good advice. Just keep everything out. Your jackets, your flip-flops, your t-shirts everything. If your kid's room is messier than normal, it's not their fault this week. That's right. <laughs> <Wow>. It's okay. <laughs> he, he just befriended a whole bunch of kids Aww. right now by saying that. So, But yeah, I mean, it, it is literally going to be all over the place. We're going to see temperatures uh, of 40 degree difference from what it is right now to the high temperatures by the end of the week. And then we'll drop off 50 degrees to the low temperatures. Uh, we'll get it all sorted out in a second. As you can see, we do have some clouds hanging around here this morning. A couple little, uh, little breaks in the clouds here and there and despite that though we're down to 47 degrees so we're almost down to a normal low temperature the dew point is very very 
very low. Of course, when that front moved through yesterday, that dried everything out, got rid of all that humidity. Slight bit of a breeze out there right now, so it takes these temperatures. We're now down to 39 burning stage, pair of 36s in Kerrville and Comfort. And with that little breeze out there, we do have a slight bit of a wind chill to deal with right now. Feels like 45 here in town, 44 at Port SA. So not much, but just enough. Mold is on the high side and throughout the rest of today, we've got some clouds hanging around here this morning, then more sunshine later on this afternoon. A very, very nice day. Mid 60s, about what you'd expect this time of year. Then tomorrow we will begin the heating process. We'll be in the low 50s starting off, but then all the way up mid 70s mid 80s by Friday, and that's going to be near the record high temperature. We'll be flirting with a Thursday and a better chance of hitting a record by Friday in the mid 80s and then another front is going to move through here. So it's back to December and really, really cold by Sunday morning. Details on that and see how long that'll last. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos, what's going on? Sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. I wore my trench coat to work this morning just because I had it in the closet. Sarah Costa said I look like the dad from Home Alone, so <laughs> I was digging it. I thought I was more like the Macaulay Culkin character, but anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at traffic right now for this Tuesday morning. Things are getting moving here. Loop 14 and McCullough. You can see from these shots at Trans Guy that we do have uh, some pretty busy roads out there, but that's pretty normal given the fact that we are inching closer to that morning rush, but we still have that stall off US 90 at Nogalitos. Let's take you right to the map because that is in those eastbound lanes, so make sure that you're watching out for that driver. Uh, we are seeing that training problem. That's what we've been seeing throughout the entire morning. Taking a jump right over here, we still have that one off 410 Northbound at Rigsby Avenue. A jump further up does show that one still detected off I-35 Southbound at Pat Booker Road. A jump over here, that one off 1604 Westbound at Stone Oak Parkway. So stalls seem to be that trending problem for this Tuesday morning. Thankfully, keeping our fingers crossed, we've not seen any big delays if you're going to be getting out the door in the next few moments to take the kids to school or maybe head to work. Let's look at those inbound times. If maybe you're traveling to San Antonio right now, green across the board. However, 87 Lavernia, this is normal. 24 minutes at this hour. Everywhere else looking pretty green. So not a problem there, but one last look at Trans Guide here. 37 at Cesar Chavez. Things are getting moving for this Tuesday morning. We'll give you all the updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Sarah. Three people are safe, but their home is heavily damaged after an overnight fire broke out around three this morning in the 400 block of Sterling near I-10 and Martin Luther King Drive. Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier the damage was so extensive that the family will not be able to stay there. Were they able to save anything? Well, San Antonio firefighters say that they may be able to salvage some of the smaller personal items. It seems like some of the family members are trying to do that right now. We have seen them going in and out of the home uh, carrying some items. Now, the fire drove them out around 3 o'clock this morning. Firefighters say that the father was the first to notice the smoke. He had woken up to what he thought was the sound of his cats getting into trouble. Instead, that man who was in a wheelchair found heavy smoke when he made his way into the other rooms of the house. He woke up his wife and daughter, and then they all made it out safely. No one was hurt. The firefighters say it looks like the water heater is what caused this fire. The fire started on the back right side of the home, and they say that's where the water heater was located. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a teen is in jail in connection to a deadly shooting on the east side. According to an arrest affidavit, it happened back on October 17th on Till Drive near Rigsby Avenue. The report says 17-year-old Antonio Rodriguez was traveling in the front seat of a car when he shot and killed a 16-year-old male who was sitting in the back seat. His body was then dropped off in the middle of the road. Rodriguez was arrested yesterday and faces a murder charge. And one of San Antonio's largest school districts is examining the books on school shelves. Luke comes after a Texas House committee launched an investigation into books that pertain to race or sexuality. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio this morning to break it all down. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. That list, it's pretty long, but you can find that full list on KSAT.com right now of all those books under review. But a spokeswoman for Northeast ISD says the review was underway prior to State Representative Matt Krause's request. The Texas Tribune reports Krause has a list of with about 850 book titles. He's asked districts across the state to review if they have those books. NEISD says it has determined it has about 400 114 of those books, but most will stay on the shelves. The district released this this statement saying in part, quote, for us, this is not about politics or censorship, but rather about ensuring that parents choose what is appropriate 
for their minor children. Out of an abundance of caution, NEISD asked our staff to review books from the Krauss list to ensure they did not have any obscene or vulgar, vulgar material in them, end quote. And it continues, moving forward, NEISD is forming a book review committee to determine what books may need to go in a separate section of the library. The district says it will be adding an e-tool for parents to check which books their children are checking out. For more information, more information will be sent to parents in the next coming days. Mark and Stephanie. Thanks, Sarah. Today, one of the biggest breast cancer symposiums in the world is starting here in San Antonio. We'll be there talking to experts about the latest treatment, research surrounding breast cancer. You can get involved, too. All you have to do is scan the QR code on your screen right now with your smartphone. It'll guide you to our website, and from there, let us know what you want to know about the latest treatments and innovations. The Breast Cancer Symposium runs through Friday. The Omicron variant is in Texas, a Houston area woman testing positive for the new variant of COVID-19. The county judge there says the woman is in her 40s and has no recent travel history. Health officials say she is fully vaccinated and has not required hospitalization. There are still no cases in San Antonio, but scientists continue to search for the variant. COVID cases on the rise across the U.S., averaging more than 120,000 new cases and more than 1,600 deaths every day. Health officials say more than 99% of new cases are the Delta variant. Omicron is spreading. Emerging evidence shows it may spread more quickly than Delta, but could be less severe. You have a virus that, that could knock out a more virulent strain like Delta and, and evolve to what would be the best case scenario, evolve to essentially a common cold-like virus. Experts say there's still a lot to learn about Omicron. In the meantime, they say vaccines are still our best protection. In your morning headlines, today marks 80 years since the attack on the U.S. Naval Base in Pearl Harbor. The attack on the U.S. Naval Base in Hawaii on December 7th, 1941, took 2,390 American lives. Today, about 30 survivors and 100 other veterans of the war are expected to participate in a ceremony at a pier overlooking the USS Arizona Memorial. They will observe a moment of silence at 7.55 a.m., the same minute the attack began decades ago. Japanese forces attacked Pearl Harbor with torpedo planes, bombers, and fighter planes on the morning of December 7th in the hope of destroying U.S. power in the Pacific. The attack led to the United States entering World War II and the eventual defeat of Japan in August of 1945, following the U.S. atomic bomb attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. A storm system is flooding streets and knocking out power in parts of Hawaii. Some residents had to self-evacuate and find higher ground. Crews are working to clear debris and rescue cars stranded in the mud. Mud. Up to 12 inches of rain has fallen in some parts of Hawaii. Officials say this slow moving storm system could be one of several similar systems to hit the islands this winter. President Putin and Russian President Vladimir Putin are scheduled to, uh, President Biden and Vladimir Putin are scheduled to speak today amid growing concerns that Russia could be preparing to invade Ukraine, a U.S. ally. Last night, the head of the CIA addressed those concerns and what might happen if Putin sends troops across that border. ABC's Ike Jachi has the details. This morning, just hours before a video call between President Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin, the director of the CIA is giving a rare interview about the high-stakes meeting. What we've seen in recent weeks is a, a steady and unusual military buildup by the Russians along uh, Ukraine's borders. These satellite images show the Russian troops gathered on Ukraine's doorstep, sparking fears of an invasion. Biden's in a bind. On the one hand, if he pushes too far and tries to do things, for example, support Ukraine militarily, that looks provocative. On the other hand, if he backs away, he looks like he hasn't stood by an important U.S. friend. Conflict has been simmering between Russia and Ukraine since 2014, when Russia seized control of Crimea, a strategic peninsula. CIA Director William Burns last night said Putin has not made up his mind whether to use force against Ukraine. But Burns added he would never underestimate Putin's, quote, risk appetite. It's always very difficult to gauge, um, you know, Putin's intent. I would never underestimate President Putin's risk appetite on Ukraine. The president's conversation was an opportunity to reinforce, to reemphasize, you know, the, um, the, the costs 
of a use of force, but to also emphasize of renewed military aggression, but to also emphasize the importance of de-escalation and a renewed effort at diplomacy. The White House says it's considering many options if Russia were to invade, including sanctions or meeting our NATO allies' request for additional forces. A senior administration official says President Biden will warn Putin of, quote, very real costs should Russia invade Ukraine. Telling ABC News the president will also make clear that there is an effective way forward with respect to diplomacy. The last known call between the leaders was in July, when Biden pressed Putin on Russian hackers launching cyber attacks. Ike Jachi, ABC News, New York. 641, 47 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the tools you need to draft a workout game plan. 645, believe it or not, the new year is just around the corner, which means tons of people are going to be putting go to the gym on their New Year's resolutions list. So here are some things to do now to help you stay on track for your goals come January. First, set realistic expectations. Know what you want to achieve and increase your workout intensity as you progress. For example, if your goal is to finish a 5K, build a plan that begins with completing shorter runs. Next, try tracking your workouts. Journaling after gym sessions not only help you stay on top of your goals, but also keep you motivated to see the progress you've made. And make sure you're getting enough rest. According to health experts, the body actually rebuilds muscles during your off days. Let's jog over to Stephen Cavazos for the latest on your Tuesday morning commute. You know, it's almost like a light switch just went off right now. Mark and Stephanie, we have a number of problems now out on the roadways. Check out what's going on here off I-10 at Hebner. We have some flashing lights and vehicles that are slowing down there. That's because a crash has just been detected in that area. Let's go ahead and take you right to the map because that is there on those eastbound lanes of I-10. Uh, we're not seeing any stretch of traffic just yet, but now that we are at morning rush, that could quickly change. So watch out for those flashing lights, but not the only problem we've spotted. Taking a jump right over here, that stall still detected off US-90 eastbound in Nogalitos, but Another crash right over here off 37 southbound at South Hackberry, not causing any issues in those southbound lanes, but something to be aware of. A jump over here does show we have a stall off 410 northbound at Rigsby Avenue. Also seen some sort of delay there on 87, so watch out for that. A jump up over here, that stall still detected off 35 southbound at Pat Booker Road. And we still have the, those pesky issues that have been there for quite a while now. You can see some stretch of orange starting to build there as well off of US 90. But right now, those problems that you want to be very careful of are going to be these crashes. You can see that we all have a lot of folks now out on the roadway, so make sure to take it easy this morning, guys. Everybody slow it down. Slow it down. Oh, yes. It's pretty crowded out there. Mm -hmm. Grab a coat. Okay. Yeah, because it's cold. If you haven't stepped outside yet, it's like, ooh. But this is a kind of a normal uh, low temperature this morning, and as you can see, we've got a couple of clouds hanging around here. They'll begin to, to clear on out. It's going to be just a fantastic day, just a, almost a perfect fall afternoon, late fall afternoon. All right, going to jump way, way ahead into the future, and this is the Climate Prediction Center, and these are not temperatures, but it is basically the, the odds, the chances of being above or below normal. So six to ten days, so this is looking at at next week and there's a pretty good chance of having temperatures that are going to be on the above normal side. Normal high right now is 65 degrees. Also going into next week, rain chances are kind of almost nil. Jumping even further into the future, this is the uh, 8 to 14 day outlook and going into the basically the week before Christmas or almost leading up to Christmas. And once again, looks like it's a pretty good chance of being on the above normal side and almost an even chance of rain. So it doesn't mean it's going to be raining or not raining. So again, it's just kind of an indication. And this is pretty much what we've been saying for the past uh, couple of uh, couple of months, that it is a La Nina year. That's the, the pattern out there in the Pacific Ocean, which usually means a warmer and drier winter for us. And that's definitely living up to it. Now, in the short term, obviously it's pretty chilly this morning, and we're going to have a big roller coaster going on this week. Humidity, very dry air out there right now. It's going to stay very pleasant all day long. Uh, jacket, sweater weather, even throughout the afternoon, 65 for a high temperature today. Then the humidity is really going to start to work its way back in here. So by tomorrow evening, actually by tomorrow morning, 
you kind of notice a little more humidity and then by the afternoon, yes, you're going to feel it when we get above 60 for these dew point temperatures and that will continue to go up over the next couple of days and boy, by Thursday, Friday, it's just going to be plain old humid and that's going to be combined with temperatures that are going to be approaching record highs both Thursday and Friday, mid 80s, low to mid 80s, 85 is going to be the warmest day on Friday. We actually have have had a couple of little sprinkles showing up on radar this morning, but with the air so dry, down here in the lower levels, all that's been evaporating before it's ever reached the ground. And then we're going to continue to clear out throughout the rest of today. So forecast goes like this. We're going to make it up to 60. We'll have some of these clouds left over this morning and then 60 degrees at noon. Partly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 65. Again, that's pretty much the normal, the average high temperature at this time of year. Tomorrow, still a chilly morning jacket weather, 52 degrees, and then we make it all the way up to 75. We stay at 60 on Thursday with that extra humidity. Those low temperatures stay in the low to mid 60s and then highs up to 85 on Friday, hot and humid <laughs> and then chilly and beautiful over the weekend down to 36 then by Sunday morning. Scarves and sunscreen <laughs> and flip yes. flops and, and t-shirts and everything yeah, else. Well, fleece, fleece all and of the above. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll be prepared. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. 650 about 47 degrees. Months of planning now giving way to painting. A mural we told you about finally taking shape. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the update tomorrow on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam, like Mike said, expect a lot of changes this week. We're going up and down and all over the place, but for now, we're at 47 degrees. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, the high stakes showdown between President Biden and Russian President Putin. Russian troops are building up along the border with the Ukraine and fears of an invasion are growing. We are live near the front lines this morning and you're gonna see it right here on GMA. A water heater becomes a fire starter. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio firefighters suspect that that is the cause of the fire that caused heavy damage to this east side home. This is the 400 block of Sterling, not far from Martin Luther King and I-10. Firefighters were called here around three o'clock this morning. They say the father of this family woke up because he thought his cats were playing around, went into another room and discovered smoke in the house. He was able to wake up his wife and daughter and they all got out safely. Firefighters went in and knocked down the fire, but they say it did cause extensive damage to this home. And again, they are looking at the water heater as the cause of the fire. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up later this morning on TMSA 9, a UTSA program is hoping to bridge the digital divide for residents living on the west side. UTSA's West Side Community Center has been helping residents and business owners since 2019, and now students are expanding their services. Our Tiffany Huertas will explain how students are, are people uh, keeping uh, to, uh, let's say that again, I'll explain how students are people keep up with the latest technological advances. We'll figure it out today on GMSA at 9. We'll see you there. And for now, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. You know, it's not looking good right now on the roadways. Take a look right now, US 90 at Medio Creek. We do have flashing lights out there. Still trying to figure out exactly where this crash happened, but we know that that is actually on the right shoulder. So you can see a river of cars out there. Taking you though, we still have this crash off I-10 eastbound at Hebner Road. A jump down here shows another crash off 37 southbound at South Hackberry, so watch out for those first responders, Mike. Grab a coat before you head out there. We still have a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning, and temperatures were down to 46 now, 36 is in parts of the Hill Country, so maybe flirting with freezing on uh, some of the low-lying areas of the Hill Country. 60 at noon, 65 high temperature. Good-looking day today, and then the next few days, it is going to heat up. It's going to be downright hot and humid by the end of the week. Another front comes through, and it's back to nice fall temperatures, late fall temperatures, and really cold Sunday morning. For now, bundle up. That's <laughs> true. At least we have options this week, right? You guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is next.